All right, so I just went for about a about a thirty minute run. Uh, <clears throat> Zigzag the neighborhood, trying to get an idea of where things are, going different routes, making sure I got a good idea of how to get back to the house, that sort of thing. Um, it is pretty interesting running through the hood, being yeah, you know crazy ass little white boy like me. I. Uh, <coughs> I think I project a particular fitting vibe. I don't get messed with so much. The only times that I get a little nervous in the sense of a forced interaction of sorts, it's like a group of teenagers, something like that. Uh, but that's not any different than group, running into a group of teenagers in fucking middle of suburbia. You just it can be dangerous in packs like that. I heard some some stuff. This is, you know, some young, uh, overly confident sort of kids playing basketball. But they were, they, uh, I think they were wanting some sort of eye contact for me to be like afraid of them or something. I, I can hear, I can hear some funny stuff. Uh, one of these days, I'll go over there and play a little basketball with them. But unfortunately, I'm so bad with basketball, it probably wouldn't do me any good. So, we're going to, I need to get a little, maybe a little ice. We're going to do another kettlebell swing, push-ups. I've changed my number from 50 to 75 for my first set of push-ups now. I'm slightly bummed out today, but nothing bad. Um, motorcycle that I thought I had secured isn't going to work out. Um, but I'll find one around the same price. The biggest thing that I've gotten so excited about is I've actually budgeted in how to to pay this thing with the guy. And uh, uh, he had a had a bike for me. Danny worked with him at the museum. He's a head chef and a museum, or excuse me, head chef and events and cafe Greg's main man and amuse but um he had a bike uh, swapped the carburetor up on it and got it running and then found out it was leaking oil so he doesn't feel good about selling it to me another reason I like the idea of buying a bike from from Danny is because I feel like I can trust him I feel like he's not gonna give me a clunker and leave me stuck with something uh, it's sort of I'm buying a mechanic at the same time if there's small issues that happen with it, who else am I going to go to other than him if I buy it from him? And being in the workplace, seeing him every day, that kind of thing, uh, it's just, I think it's a, a good good way to secure a bike. So one's coming, but not as soon as I would have liked. That gives me time to get my license situation figured out, take the class maybe, uh, put a little more actual cash uh, to the side that way I can uh, I can uh, <clears throat> pay it off even easier more you know it was one big old chunk so I'm out of gin so now I'm drinking Jack I prefer gin but both of them put a little fucking hair on their chest won't they I mean, that's why them little old ladies drink gin and tonics right All right, I don't know what I'm going to do. Same old thing, I think. 20, 20, 20, 20, 40. Nope, nope. 20, 20, 20, 20, 40. No, there's curls before that. 20, uh, 30 curls, 40 of the whatevers, and then I'll probably do, need some air. Um, push-ups, maybe some lawnmower rips, and um, the guy at work was telling me something about some oblique thing. Um, since 
I seem to have a genetic predisposition for oblique knots. I might as well work on them a little more and make them real freakazoidish. So, I need to do some more ab stuff. I'm trying to trying to poke through on that. I want to have a resting six pack by the end of summer, but I haven't done a goddamn thing to really to really pop it out. I just I just haven't felt like doing abdominal shit, man. I don't I don't like getting my gra fucking back on the grass and shit. I don't have any. I need to get a pull-up bar too. It'd be nice to have a pull-up bar out here. I don't know where we can put it, but there's plenty of spots. Pull-up bar is really good. I'm kind of a freak on the pull-ups. I could probably bust 30 out right now. Um, at least at least 20. So I, I I don't know if there's a park nearby, but I don't know if it's got like adult exercise equipment or not. It's got a basketball court and uh, some like kitty looking shit. But I don't know if it's got, you know, a couple pull-up bars and ropes. It'd be nice if it did have some of that stuff. But um, I guess, you know, when I run for fucking mayor or something I can do. The first thing I do as mayor is smoke pot at the pot, uh, press conference. I just say, I could just tell, I tell him, I'm just, I'm gonna break the law. I'm gonna tell you which laws I'm gonna break. The first one being fucking smoking pot. All these politicians are crooked criminals anyway. Won't you be open about the laws you're breaking? I don't steal any money or do anything like that. I'm sure as hell gonna do what the people are doing. So now I am a person. Those politicians ain't people. Ask yes, me. <clears throat> Alright. I need to find some sunshine. I don't like doing this shit in the shade. I'm such a reptile. Fucking Jack is feeling good in my chest right now. Whew. This is what I needed during the winter. Feel a little better doing that. So I got my little hammock up and everything. Backyard's starting to look cool. Doesn't look like I'm going to get much in the way of direct sun anyway.
first time I've done that. <sighs> that I can recall anyway, on that exercise. I forgot about the push-ups. I'll do 50. 75 number I've been hitting, but not after the set of stuff. That's just my random, throughout the day I drop. And if I'm fully recovered, I can hit, I can hit 75 pretty quality ones feel about where I did at uh, 50 a couple weeks ago where it's the last one's a little tough feel pretty good so that's a good sign hopefully I can work up to 100 I don't know if I talked about it yet yeah I'm just kind of dropping randomly throughout the day to at least 20 Lost count a little bit in the beginning, but somewhere around 75. Getting a little something going, I guess. So, I don't know what's gonna happen to her plants. They're not looking so hot. The one she bought from the store. They're already kind of fucked up. Looking a little like they need some water. Um, I don't know. That's how many fucking 
rocks we pulled out of this damn thing. You can see right there. Yeah. So, quite the quite the rock garden now too. And then there's a hammock. It's gonna rain. I I think tomorrow. Looking a little cloudy today. I think it's like 40 or 50 percent chance with the sand. Uh, maybe that's this evening. I don't know. I guess uh, do another quick round, and then uh, I guess this will be working out in the hood part five or six. I'm not sure which it is now, um, which means I've lived here at least ten days now. Yeah, I guess I've been here pretty much since the first. Didn't get solidly moved out of the old place for, until probably a week later, but I'd have to check one of these logs. But um, I do these the kettlebell thing I do every other day, and on my day off, I think I found a, a wrestling pal. He's this big fucking pit bull across the street, and he... He needs a little action, like, you know, he needs to blow off some steam. He doesn't get to go out and run and stuff too much. So, I was f fucking around with him the other day, and he's pretty fun to f fight. You know, like, snap him down, twist him, twist him and stuff, and hop around. So I can, you know, get a little exercise out of it and let him blow off some steam. And he'll behave a little better, be a... A little more relaxed during the day because wear, I'll wear his ass out a little bit. <clears throat> Dog's name is called is Chubbs. Chubbs, I just call him Meathead. He's a big fucking damn thing. So has his fucking nuts too. They don't want to cut him off. It's part of his deal too. He uh, definitely needs a bitch. I don't really feel like doing this one anymore, man. I'm gonna be a little lazy. I just don't feel like swinging him a pie right now. I need, a, I need a little bit of jack. Got in my blood, uh, muscles here a little bit. I'm feeling a little tired. Of that. I wanted to do three, I think I only did two. I'm not fucking worried about it right now. I'll do a little routine probably later tonight. Something, you know. 
And I might just rest at some, some lighter sets now. For some reason, I just don't feel like really grunting through one right now. I do think it's the whiskey. Whiskey's not good for this. The most lackluster fist fight I ever got into was <clears throat> after a night of, and it was like six or seven, bourbon and gingers from fucking bamboo. You know, that's a fucking gasser of a cocktail. Uh, right there, that's the, that's the best, best place to get a fucking drink in town. And get a drink, you know, it's not, it's, it's a, it's a good one, they fucking, it's a good, high octane, man, heavy pours, and, uh, fair prices, be sure to tip the shit out of the bartenders, comes around, good place, been there forever, apparently, uh, I've shit the bed there a little bit, uh, <laughs> I don't, man, now that I don't live walking distance there, I don't have to worry about it so much, but I've definitely uh, been a little sleazy uh, a few times in there, but I uh, can't say I'm the only one, so it's not that bad, just a little embarrassing, feeling, feeling, feeling women up in, in the bar ain't exactly something I'm into doing all the time, but uh, <clears throat> Yeah, it's the whiskey. So the lackluster fight I got into, it was a six or seven fucking bourbon and gingers from Bamboo, walking home, the ex-girlfriend, girlfriend at the time, uh, and I got into an altercation. She, we, we fought a lot. Uh, I couldn't stand the way she talked, man. I, I didn't like to listen to her talk, and uh, I got pretty annoyed with her when I was drunk like an asshole. She finds something to be upset about because she'd get really jealous about fighting for attention. Long story short there, I was so comfortable with her that I didn't feel like I had to really pay as much attention to her when we were in social settings and stuff. I was trying to curate a little bit more of the, the larger dynamic and make her comfortable, I thought. Turns out... She would get jealous of any other woman I talked to, and uh, felt like I was ignoring her. And I think other people felt similar, so that's something to think about in my future sort of relationships of, of that. Just depends on the personality. She was a pretty quiet type. Uh, so anyway, I'm. We're in an argument. I, we're, we're going different paths, and I get this cool hand loop bullshit idea to start ripping uh, towing signs down. And uh, two, two or three blocks up, I see a guy that's walking his little goddamn beagle or something. And it uh, looks like a mix between a chihuahua and a beetle. Beagle. Looks like a woman's dog, too. But uh, He's walking in. Every time I rip one of these signs down, he stops and turns around, and I just walk. He doesn't get to see me do it. Eventually, I catch up with him, and the very last sign is right outside my apartment, but in front of him. So I sit. I sit in my stoop and just wait for him to get past it. When he gets past it, I rip it down. I start to turn around to go inside, and he starts talking shit. You've been fucking with me all day, he says. Leave me the fuck alone, blah, blah, and I'm just like, no, dude, I'm trying to rip these fucking signs down, and I'm done. I'm going to bed. And then he starts to lecture me about keep ripping the fucking signs down, and uh, I just kind of like, I was just like, fuck off, and I got pretty cartoonishly, like, mocked the fuck out of him, because uh, I was fucking drunk, and he was pretty thick. I wouldn't call him... Uh, he was kind of fat, I guess, but he wasn't a small guy. He wasn't exactly tall, but his, <laughs> his dumb ass comes up to me with a dog on a fucking leash and puts his fucking fists up and gets right in my face with him. I just lost it then, and so I just start fucking 
laughing at him, teasing him, blah, 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 blah. The next thing I know, he punches the fucking shit out of me, breaks my glasses on my fucking face. I wrestle him down to the ground. He, I think he hit me twice pretty good. Uh, it split my nose, broke my glasses, and uh, basically all I did was get on top of him and fucking hug him for 30 minutes. I was so exhausted. I couldn't fucking breathe. All I did was just fucking breathe on him and talk a bunch of shit about how I fucked his mother this way the night before and that he wasn't going to get up and I was just going to I was going to lay on him all night like he like he wanted. And he 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 was, he was wiggling around and fucking screaming and crying and like uh and I was just kind of riding him. I didn't even, I, could, I I I didn't snap. It was just so stupid and absurd that I didn't even feel like punching him. I, I got a fuck him like a couple of rib shots in, but he was so thick that I, I don't think it did anything to him. And um, I didn't have any strength behind him. I wasn't feeling very good. And uh, I headbutted him a couple times, I think. I vaguely remember that, but I just I couldn't get into that primal sort of snap. I've been in a lot of, a lot of fights. And um, uh, I, I just wasn't afraid uh, uh, at this point, and it was too stupid, and I was just so exhausted with, with liquor on my, uh, in my lungs, you know, that I didn't, didn't beat him up that, you know, it didn't really beat him up, I just kind of broke my glasses, ripped up a pair of jeans that were like a hundred dollar pair of jeans somebody had given me, <laughs> kind of glad I don't have those jeans, fucking lucky brain. Uh, some of the worst clothing I've ever owned comes out of that place. Just the quality is really bad. But, um, still, they were a gift. And I kind of felt like an asshole to ruin a pair of jeans somebody spent money on for me. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, that was just a gross, that was a whiskey night. Like, it's just, people talk about whiskey making them crazy and stuff, it just makes me fucking tired, I think. It makes me sluggish. I'm not, I'm not doing anything with a little whiskey in me. I'm not gonna go run around with a croquet uh, thing in a jig and scream about taking your medicine, Danny. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with myself. I had a bike ride planned later this evening. I guess I just keep cleaning up the room. Made progress on the room, the boxes. There's plenty of room in the attic I found, so I may uh, just start chunking big boxes of stuff just to clear the room up there, and then I can go up and pull piece by pieces down once in a while that I that I think about, that I need, because I don't, I don't want to have to pack a bunch of shit up again come August, um, so I'm going to try to just get the bare essentials out and just throw everything else back in the attic. That way, I just get a truck, throw everything in, and then bam, uh, maybe Pittsburgh, maybe Richmond still, maybe, maybe Roanoke, Roanoke's, uh, Roanoke's popped up on the radar again, I think I could have a, a similar expensive living situation. Uh, with a particular family in which I would be valued as a, as a person to have around so the rent would be lower. I would help with the kids a little bit, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, in the garden and lugging groceries around, getting, getting kids to school, or stuff, stuff, stuff like that, that if I'm around I can, I can definitely help. But the problem is, is finding, finding work in Roanoke that's worth doing is very hard for someone like myself, um, I don't know what I would do right now if I were to bolt out to run it. So, other than, of course, sell these t-shirts, I could pay the rent. I could pay the rent alone. Uh, I, could, I could live off these these Roanoke t-shirts if I were to get the, uh, get a contract with uh, Center in the Square or something. I could, I could pull in, pull in a fair amount of money. There were, there were time periods, uh, like the, right before, right before, Christmas and the month of Christmas, uh, they were thousand dollar, thousand dollars in t-shirts a, uh, a month. 
that's uh, that was pretty mind blowing. You see, six hundred bucks in one uh, sitting, one time, something like that. Pretty wild. But uh, not being in Roanoke and the, the people being busy, I haven't been able to to get that hustle down again. People move on. But what's good about that is that it makes them makes them hot when they pop up again. People realize that they're this recurring sort of uh, flush, you know, like a pop of mushrooms. Is that called a flush, if I remember correctly? But they flush up from time to time, and they've been po so so popular that um, some people have tried to copy them. And uh, it was, I heard they were hilariously uh, bad. Um, the, the logo was off. Uh, there, were, there were a lot of things that someone who's trying to do a copy that doesn't, doesn't think about why the t-shirts are so good. and doesn't think about, the, the, I mean, I really, really put some time into these shirts being exactly what they are with the type of fabric they are. First of all, who prints them, making them better too. I'm not ordering them online and rolling the dice there. I have a guy who's reliable and uh, a local. He uh, owns Greenhouse Board Shop. He does a lot of t-shirts on the side. Lee Johnson is his name. Spectacular <clears throat> to do business with. Always willing to work with you, tell you how things are negotiates the price very fairly, tells you exactly what he's got to pay, what, you know, what the, it's, it's, he's a good guy. So, <clears throat> anyway, I heard the, the knockoffs were like on a, a crappy fabric, and I think it was like an iron-on sort of thing, and it was somebody down by center of the square who uh, should have known better than to do something like that. It was, um, uh, kind of gross but um <clears throat> it turned out to be reburn got the got the down low on it for me john reburn used i don't know if he's still in roanoke anymore appalachia press uh was the place i used to do consignment on him man i made some fucking money with that guy he kept me he kept me off the streets for a while too bad my rent was stupidly high or i would have i'd have been I could have bought a fucking car from profits that I was making out of his place. Instead, it went to fucking one of the worst um, rental places I've ever had on uh, 112 Kirk Avenue. Uh, uh, they were the, just scum dogs. They didn't. They didn't. I, I lived without a refrigerator and without without a stove the entire time. I was in the tenant, and they still wouldn't take a. Uh, they, it was just fucking, they wouldn't do anything for me. So, but I was enamored with the place because it had the, it had the right openness to be a gallery. And I was doing events, having interesting little uh, parties, private parties by, um, I forgot the website. It was a, like a BDSM, what is it, whatever, sort of a, uh, folks they'd be a lot mostly uh, young to middle-aged adults uh, who had they all had website profiles and they all they all had to have paid their dues in a sense of going on a group outing a uh, public group outing to like either Mac of dues or to uh, so they used to go to the Irish pub a lot I'm drawing a blank as to what the website was called, but it was kind of neat. I joined it initially because I was looking for models, and I figured these folks would be comfortable with someone seeking them out for the sake of paying them to be naked in a place for two or three hours at a time um, at 15 bucks an hour or so. Uh, that's why I was joining, because I was trying to get back into drawing from life. I, I think I had read some transcriptions of letters from uh, Vincent to T Theodore or Tio, whatever his fucking name was, but uh, was getting, trying to get into 
drawing from life again, but I just joined up, looked around, saw some interesting stuff, and then never b bothered with it. And then when I got the new space, I hit them up because I noticed in other cities, uh, the groups seem to have pretty good access to some underground spots around, and they would host these private parties where the people would be comfortable with one another, and you had a pretty s a straightforward identifying language of, of things that people could talk about and negotiate exactly what they were into, whether it was men or whether it was women, whether it was leather or whether it was touch based things or whether it was deprivation or with blindfolding or we had we had we had a, a blood night we had a, a liquid nitrogen night where a guy with a like some some guy with a doctorate who's a professor i believe at a at a nearby university will say uh was slinging liquid nitrogen all over my place and hitting hitting people with roses and stuff and they break and uh they were doing some branding with it where they've had different shapes of stuff that they were freezing and then putting on each other. Um, some piercings, stuff like that. The, the, the Blood Knight was the one of the last ones, and I think that one scared people a little bit, especially since I participated a little bit. And as a host, I believe I broke the broke code a little bit, and I sh shouldn't have shouldn't have done that. But I couldn't help myself because I used to work with a lot of blood when I was in college. And I saw an opportunity to do a blood painting. I, it didn't come out all that great, but I can't remember exactly what I did. I, I had blood all over myself and then I pressed my body against paper. I don't know whatever happened to that. But um, I'm going to call it quits.